Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're looking at Netflix, ticker symbol NFLX. We're going to look at how Netflix got to where they are today, and if we think that Netflix's stock is good at its current price. Hopefully, we can get an idea of the positives and the negatives that Netflix is currently facing. Okay, so let's start with the basics of Netflix's business. So today, Netflix is an online subscription streaming service that gives you access to shows, movies, documentaries, things along those lines, all without commercials. But that's not the way they began. So when Netflix first launched back in 1997, well, they were a DVD mail service provider. And they were one of the first companies to try to do that. And early on, Netflix started growing quite quickly as their primary competition at this time was Blockbuster. And this brings us to the early profits of Netflix. So like most startups, Netflix was unprofitable in their early years. And right before they turned profitable, Netflix's stock went public in 2002 for $15 a share. And interestingly, in the first year or so, Netflix's stock didn't do all that much. And then it started running higher. And by 2004, Netflix's stock was up above $70 per share. Then Netflix did a two-for-one stock split. And up until about 2009, their stock didn't do much of anything after the stock split. But this is where things get interesting for Netflix. So this is a long-term chart of profits for Netflix. And as we can see, their profits have ramped up significantly in the past couple of years. And to make it a bit easier to see, let's switch over to the long-term revenue chart. So in 2007, Netflix launched their streaming service. Now, it seems that they didn't start reporting revenue from their streaming service until 2010, where they reported a mere $4 million in revenue. But as we can see, that all started to change. And by 2012, Netflix's streaming service revenue was becoming a thing as Netflix was the leader in the streaming service space. And right around the same time, something else began to happen that spurred Netflix's amazing growth in their stock price, as well as some questions as to whether or not buying Netflix's stock today is a good move. So in 2013, Netflix decided that creating their own content would be the best move for the long-term sustainability of Netflix's business. Netflix kicked off their first series with House of Cards in 2013, followed just a few months later by uh, Orange is the New Black. Now, these series, along with the growing popularity of their streaming service in general, helped spur the revenue a ton over the next couple of years. From 2013 to 2014, revenue jumped by more than 36% then 29%, then 35%, and it's been growing at an impressive clip every year since then. So this brings us to a hurdle that Netflix is facing. So this is Netflix's debt going back to 2012. And as we can see, they've been racking up a ton of debt. And knowing that they're profitable, I mean, if we switch back to their revenue, well, we can see that they had over $1.2 billion in profits last year. So going back to debt, the fact that they're racking up this much debt while they're profitable is a bit of a concern in my eyes. To make this even more complicated, well, now if we switch over to the free cash flow, well, free cash flow has been getting progressively worse from year to year. Now, we could see in the early years that up until 2012, well, their free cash flow was pretty good, and then it started taking a turn. What happened? You guessed it, they started creating their own content. Once they started producing their own content, well, debt has piled up quickly and free cash flow has gotten significantly worse as they've had to fund the creation of this new content. And this brings us to today. So as we can see, Netflix's stock hasn't done all that much over the past year or so. But if we were to switch this to a five-year chart, well, here we can see that Netflix's stockholders have likely been quite happy over the past few years. So now the question is, what do we think is going to happen to Netflix's stock over the next couple of years? So on the positive side, some of the content that Netflix has created has really been great. House of Cards had a good run, Orange is the New Black has been good, Stranger Things, Narcos, Ozark, well, they've all been driving in new subscribers to the Netflix platform. And I'm guessing that Netflix will continue to do a good job of creating new content and therefore driving new subscribers. On the negative side, as we saw, it cost them a fortune to run this type of business. And as awesome as it is that Netflix is profitable from, a pro, uh, from an earnings per share basis, well, the fact that they have to keep raising money to create content could eventually be a really big problem for them. Because at the end of the day, they almost have to continue to create content. 
to illustrate Disney, one of my favorite companies, well, they're getting ready to launch the Disney Plus platform. And Disney Plus is going to be a real force in the streaming industry. Don't forget, of all the, outside of all of the Disney movies and Disney shows that Disney already has, well, they also have Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, uh, they own National Geographic, plus they have a huge pile of movies and shows that they've already created that is not going to be available on Netflix. Plus there's Warner Media, and they're launching in 2020, I believe. It's another streaming platform, and they've got a ton of content. They have HBO, they have Cinemax, they have the Warner Brothers Networks, and that list goes on and on as well. Now, they're under AT&T, so in my mind, I think that this is a real problem for Netflix because clearly content is going to be very important to keeping uh, subscribers on board, but you have companies like Disney and AT&T that generate a ton of cash in their other lines of business that allow for them to fund this particular part of their business so they can afford, if it did go negative for them, they can afford it for longer, most likely longer than, uh, than Netflix can. So ultimately, the question is not, can Netflix make the content necessary to compete with Disney or AT&T? Clearly, they can make some great content. But to me, the question is, can they sustain themselves long enough to contend as the big guys enter the market and ultimately, these big guys are coming into Netflix's home territory, and it's likely they're going to do pretty good. And I think the answer to the question as to whether or not Netflix can sustain themselves, uh, I think we need to make a few assumptions. So the question is, will customers of Netflix simply add the Disney streaming service to their household budget? Or when it comes out, do they cancel Netflix and jump over to Disney instead? or the Warner Media product, or Apple Plus, whenever that comes out. Because if people cancel, well, clearly this can spell long-term trouble for Netflix's stock. Well, we actually got some insight on this very topic. So in Netflix's last earnings report, well, Netflix had come out and said that they lost 100,000 subscribers. Now, this wasn't a loss from the previous year, it was a loss from the previous quarter, but either way, subscribers were down for the quarter. But some interesting things actually happened in the second quarter that may have led to the decrease for Netflix. So first off, Netflix didn't have any serious shows, any of their big shows drop in the second quarter. Meanwhile, Game of Thrones, their final season went live. It started playing in the second quarter. So the theory goes that at least some portion of Netflix's customers may have jumped off of Netflix and went over to HBO for at least a few months. Now, Netflix's management actually raised their subscriber guidance for both Q3 and Q4 since Stranger Things was just recently released. So for the cost-conscious customer, well, it's easy enough for them to, in theory, leave HBO and come over to Netflix to watch whatever shows are most uh, popular at that time or whatever shows they're most interested in seeing. But if the global economy would ever begin to struggle, well, it's likely that more people will become cost conscious and suddenly canceling could be more of a common occurrence among subscribers based on their priorities. Now, which one do they cancel? Do they cancel Netflix or Disney or HBO or any one of the other streaming services that are out there? I guess that all depends on the customer. Either way, I think that it's becoming clear the hurdles that Netflix is facing. And as much as I love their service, and I personally use it, I think that the real question is, how do they last long enough as these heavy hitters enter the marketplace? In my eyes, even with the pullback in the stock market, uh, in, in the stock price, which happened, by the way, because of the Q2 earnings number, well, even with that pullback, I'm not sure it makes sense to get involved, at least for a few quarters. I wanna see what happens with the Disney streaming platform. Does Netflix see a bigger hit there than they expected? Now, on the positive side, Netflix isn't sitting around doing nothing. They're getting ready to launch their own low-cost, mobile-only package to uh, larger developing nations like India. And this has the potential to bring in a ton of revenue if it's done correctly. But what do you think? Do you think that Netflix is a good buy right now at this level? Or do you think it makes sense to sit and wait how customers react to the new pr uh, platforms being provided? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't done so yet, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.